Welcome, this is Anna Garelli, and we're going to start working on the integumentary system uh, for our AMP1 lecture course. So as you will see, I've broken this up into five sections. Um, note that section four is going over the 3D skin model. This is actually a video I made for the AMP1 lab, but it is completely 100% re relevant to the lecture course as well. So you will want to look at those. And look, there is a typo, and how annoying is that? So that should be a T. All right, so let's move on. So this video is part one, and we are looking at the epidermis, functions, and structures. All right, before we crash into the integumentary system and start discussing all the parts, let's, let's address some semantics okay so what is the integumentary system so the integumentary system excuse me what is the integument the integument is another word for the cutaneous membrane what is the cutaneous membrane that is your skin but specifically referring to the epidermis and dermis all right and you know so the epidermis and dermis so what is the integumentary system, okay? That is the integument plus the accessory organs like the sebaceous gland, the pseudoriferous glands, all of those things that get wrapped up into it, the touch receptors. So we're gonna look at the integumentary system where we will look at the integument, which we can also call the cutaneous membrane, plus all of these accessory organs. So let's talk about the functions okay so we've got generic words that we can use to describe the functions of skin protection now in my courses I will not accept the word protection defense sensation syncretion as the function for anything because I want to know more want to know more Basically, you need to explain how or why. I want specifics, okay? So I should have changed the color on that. Anyway, so protection. So specifically, it will protect against um, microorganisms, all right? Things from outside of the body getting into the body. It also protects against water loss, okay? So uh, dehydration. It protect, protects from UV radiation via melanin, okay? So you've got to give more than the word protection. So no single word answers. You got to tell me how and why, okay? So that's one thing, okay? One general area. Defense, which kind of goes along with protection, but it does it through a couple of different ways. So. There's the acidic mantle secreted by the pseudoriferous glands, all right? There's also a bacterial cytal component in the sebum that we secrete. Defenses, the dermis contains macrophages, which help fight, okay? Lymph nodes, other structures. So there's a lot of different things going on with defense. And again, no single word answers. You gotta explain how. Sensation. So basically you have touch receptors and we're going to learn the touch receptors very basically okay so not huge amount of detail on these but you need to be able to distinguish light touch from pressure from pain and the different types of cells that we will be discussing okay and then you've got the secretions and what you're going to start seeing is that there's a lot of overlap so for protection and defense there are components of secretion that are playing a role in that. So like the sudoriferous glands, the sebaceous glands, but we also um, are gonna um, do the conversion, kind of the conversion and secretion of pre-vitamin D, okay, which will then be sent to the livers and kidneys for processing. Also melanin, we secrete melanin, but we also secrete sebum. We also secrete um, two kinds of sweat, an oily kind and a, pro and a um, watery kind. I'll talk more about that later. Um, thermoregulation is an important component and there are a couple of different things we do. So we've got um, 
the vasodilation aspect, which we will talk about. And then, of course, going back to secretion, we've got uh, the eccrine sweat glands, which also play a role in thermoregulation, okay? And then you've got, it can act as a blood reservoir. So, um, and this allows you to either distribute blood or shunt blood, restrict blood from your skin, divert it to muscles and organs when it's needed and so forth. And then finally, with my sloppy handwriting, X, what am I writing? X, ah, excretion, okay? So little bits of nitrogenous waste will get secreted via your sweat, okay? You're also losing water, salt, that kind of stuff, okay? All right, let's go and look at a picture. So here in this picture, we're going to look at the two major regions of the integument. The integument, the skin, let me change colors. The integument, the skin, the cutaneous membrane is just this part in blue. So this is your integument, integument, and cutaneous membrane. Now we're going to do something right here. This part here is part of the hypodermis, also called subcutaneous tissue. I want you to focus on this part, subcutaneous, which means it is below or deep to the cutaneous membrane, which means it's not part of the cutaneous membrane, which means it is not part of the integument, which means it's not skin, okay? This is a layer deep to the skin. Now, with the integumentary system, we always mention the hypodermis because it's right there, and it's an important place. So this is your subcutaneous tissue. If you look at the word um, hypodermis, hypo, below, dermis, hypodermic needles. This is where you inject hypo, the stuff in, with hypodermic needles, okay? Now, the integument itself, we're gonna divide into the epidermis and the dermis. The epidermis is this very thin layer. Now, it looks thick here in this picture, but if you were really looking at it in real life, you would take a sheet of paper and you would hold it up and you'd wave it around and you'd be like, oh, this is thicker than my epidermis, okay? Epidermis is seriously thin. It's like onion skin paper, very, very thin. You also need to just now, just begin memorizing that this is stratified squamous epithelium, okay? Now from here down to here, you have the dermis. The dermis is your hide. Okay, this is like what you make your tanned leather out of. It is the thickest part, it is the strongest part. And it's got a lot of really cool features. Right here, I've got the dermal papilla label. The word papilla means nipple, and they kind of look like a bunch of nipples, okay? So these are my dermal papillae. Now notice what I'm doing right here with making these ridges. Now I want you to imagine Legos. Legos kind of have little snaps like that, where you take one Lego and you snap it onto the next Lego, and I'm sure you've all had like a five-year-old hand you one of those really little pieces, and they're like, get it apart for me, mama. And you're like, I can't without like jamming my nail file, my really good nail file in between the two of them to separate them. Really hard to separate. Well, this is a really clever mechanism right here for keeping the epidermis stuck to the dermis. So the shape of the dermal papillae help anchor and prevent the epidermis from tearing off. There's also um, some, um, uh, I'm blanking on the word, this gluey stuff that we put in between them that helps, and I will think of it in a minute. And there's also some collagen anchors between the dermis and the epidermis holding them together. But maybe we'll get into that later. So. Let's, um, let's kind of go to the next slide and let's talk about our epidermal cells. All right, so the primary cell, the most dominant cell, the cell you're looking at in the epidermis is the keratinocyte. The keratinocytes are all part 
of the stratified squamous, and I'm just going to abbreviate E because I'm running out of room, are all part of the stratified squamous epithelium. So each individual cell of the stratified squamous epithelium is called a keratinocyte. Now I want you to focus on this part of the word, keratin, all right? Keratin is a fiber, okay? This is a fiber, it's made out of protein. It is also the fiber that you find in desmosomes, okay? Now, desmosomes are used to prevent cells from tearing things apart. So desmosomes have high tensile strength because, hi, I'm missing that up, high tensile strength because of the keratin protein, okay? So the keratin, which is gonna become more dominant as the cell gets closer to the apical surface, is there to really toughen up the cell and prevent it from damaging. The other thing that's neat about the keratin is it has a higher absorption of stain, okay? So that it starts to stain a different color as you get more of the keratin present. That's going to be important as we go along, okay? It's gonna, you're gonna use that information to help you with identifying the different strata. Okay, so remember, keratin absorbs more stain. So when there's more keratin, the cells are darker. Okay, um, the next cell, and we don't have a lot of these, um, the next cell are the melanocytes. Um, they are only found in the stratum basale. We'll go over the strata in a little bit, but for right now I'm writing it down so that you've got it in your notes. The stratum basale, what's important about the melanocyte is this part, melano. It makes melanin. So remember the word, the suffix site means cell. So this is a melanin producing cell. Whereas the keratinocyte over here is a keratin producing cell amongst, amongst a bunch of other stuff too, okay? Melanin is important because it forms what I think of as an umbrella shading shielding the nucleus and DNA, okay? Its job is to prevent the destruction of the DNA. Okay, so we've got the first two cells. Then you've got the Merkel cells, all right? Merkel cells are a touch receptor, but I need you to remember specifically that they are light touch. You got to get that part in, light touch receptor, okay? And they are only found in the epidermis. There's going to be a different light touch receptor we're going to talk about later that's only found in the dermis, okay? And then you've got the Langerhans cells. And it's not a great name. It's also sometimes called a dendritic cell, but it's basically a macrophage all right, so it strolls around the stratum spinosum, squeezing in between the cells, monitoring for pathogens that are entering the body, takes a snack, take a, takes a little bite out of it, like a little snack, and then takes it back to the lymphatic system to basically stimulate your specific immunity. All right, that was a whole lot of words. What do I want you to know? Macrophage found in the stratum spinosa, all right, increases immune response, ultimately. All right, so those are the four primary cells that you're going to find within the epidermis. So let's look at a picture next. All right, right here in this picture, we are looking at the epidermal cells. Now, everything here that's shaded in a kind of yellowish tan color, everything here, is keratinocytes, all oh, keratinocytes. And remember, keratinocytes form the stratified squamous epithelium. So when I'm asking you a test question, I could ask you, what 
is the tissue type. Or I could ask you, what is the name of the specific cell? Or something like that. The answer to this one, I'm going to abbreviate it, is stratified squamous epithelium. The answer to this one is going to be keratinocyte. So sometimes in anatomy, it's a little bit like your math classes where the first thing you've got to learn is that you're learning a new language. And when they ask you a question on your math test, you need to be able to understand what the question is asking. So in this case, this is asking about tissue type, okay? That is very different from asking about the name of the specific cell. So you need to start being aware of those different ways of asking a question so that you don't get something you know wrong, okay? Because most people know the difference, but then I often get the wrong answer because people aren't thinking about what the question is asking, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk about the stratas on, on a, the, a different slide, but right here, all right, we'll do a big L for Langerhans. Let's make it red so you can actually see it. That is your Langerhans cell. I want you to notice how it has these little arms, these little projections that are squeezing out between the cells. And basically these are gonna drag this cell all along through here and monitoring in between the cells. And one day it'll die or whatever, or go back to the lymphatic system. But basically it has these long arms so that it can monitor a very large area for pathogens and it can move between those cells which is pretty cool let me erase all that mess okay all right now we're going to talk about the merkel cell the merkel cell looks like this little red sun right here and it's got these little things sticking out this is again a light touch red receptor only found in the epidermis okay and then finally, maybe I won't use this, maybe I'll use this. We've got the melanocytes. I've got one, I've got two. Now notice over here, 10 to 25% of the cells in the stratum basale, which means it's not that frequent. What's interesting is that everybody, depending on how big they are, have about the same number of melanocytes. There's not a whole lot of variation. What is different about melanocytes between people is how many melanin granules they secrete. So what you will see is the melanocyte also has little arms that squeeze up between the cells. Isn't it adorable? It's so cute right here. Got this one coming out and this one coming out, going like that. And then you see these black dots. Now right here, they're showing you the nucleus and the chromosomes all lined up during mitosis. And you can see three little dots of melanin. So they are forming an umbrella shading the DNA so that if sunlight hits it, it bounces off so that it doesn't use that radiation to damage the DNA, okay? All right, those were the four major cells. Let's look at our strata. All right, sorry about this, but when this transferred over, it, it created this horrendous box. It was supposed to be a little skinny arrow like that. Anyway, it is what it is, so we just wanna move on. So what we have here are four of the strata labeled for thin skin. So this is thin skin. Thick skin will have five layers, okay? So the word stratum right here, you can translate that to layer, okay? Let's start at the base. So basal sounds like basement, okay? The basal layer is just this first layer of cells that adhere to the dermis over here, okay? They are constantly undergoing mitosis, and as they undergo mitosis, they push the cells up in that direction so that the cell that's here will one day be here, and then one day here, and then one day here, and then you'll scratch it off, okay? Let me erase some of this mess. Oh, I can't erase those anymore. That's annoying. Okay? All right. Now the stratum spinosum, I want you to focus on this part of the word, spinosum. That sounds like spiny. So if we come over here and we look at the stratum spinosum, so that's um, 
this section right here, you will see these dots in between the cells. These dots are increased numbers of desmosomes. And remember, desmosomes have keratin in them. Keratin absorbs more stain. And if you've got a good microscope, you will see these little spines. Most of our pictures do not have good microscopes, so you just have to believe that the spines are there. Okay, so believe, all right? So these will be, you know, eight to 10 layers on average. It can vary, okay? Then let me erase this so that we're not getting all this clutter because it is a visual clutter in here, isn't it? Okay. Um, then you've got the stratum granulosum, and I want you to focus on this part, granulosum, which sounds like granules. These granules are increased numbers of keratin. So the granulosum layer is right here. And what you see is it's staining darker because it has all these granules of keratin. So remember down here, the keratin is being used in the desmosomes to anchor those cells so that they don't rip apart. We have those up in the granulosum, but we also just start increasing overall numbers of granules in there, okay, to basically harden the cell. We're also going to increase the number of granule of lamula, little granules that are for waterproofing, okay? Also notice that the cells are beginning to flatten and they are beginning to die. They're getting ready to die. So they're going to recycle stuff that can be reused. So the organelles get recycled right here. And as you are recycling those, the plasma membrane's like, oh my God, I'm gonna be under so much pressure. And it begins to thicken up and become tougher. So the whole granulosum thing is about becoming tougher, okay? Now, remember that all of your oxygen and your nutrients, all of that stuff is coming from capillaries in the dermis. The epidermis has no blood supply. So all of your O2 has to diffuse up to here. So this is O2 diffusion. At some point in time, you run out of O2. It just can't go any further, okay? At that point right here is about where the cells die, okay? Now you've got the stratum corneum. Let's do a different color so that we can see what I'm doing. Corneum. Corneum refers to cornified. Things that are cornified have become very tough, like a horn, okay? So these are flattened, heavily keratinized cells, 20 to 30 layers thick. And basically what they're going to do is resist abrasion. So when you scratch, you don't rip all of your epidermis cell. So again, they are dead and they are designed to be exfoliated to protect the rest of the tissue. Um, now, remember that this is also called the tissue type is stratified squamous epithelium. So these cells are definitely squamous in shape, whereas these cells are definitely cuboidal in shape. And as you go in this direction, it transitions from cuboidal to flat squamous. So remember, the name of the tissue is based on the apical or functional, primary functional cell of the tissue type, okay? All right, um, let's start looking at some photomicrographs. All right, here's a nice photomicrograph. Um, it's not getting all the way down to the dermis. We've got a little bit right here of a dermal papilla, which I'm just gonna abbreviate DP, okay? And then I think I need to change colors, all right? So the basal, the stratum basale isn't all of this. It's really only this section that you're seeing. And some of it's not very, it's not a very good thin section that they made, so it's kind of hard to see it. But you can basically start get an idea that these cells are cuboidal, okay? Then the stratum spinosum, is gonna be all of this part right here, okay? So this is the stratum spinosum. This is the stratum basale here, okay? Sorry, I'm drawing terrible pictures. I turn off my phone. 
Um, what I want you to notice about the stratum spinosum is that the cells are beginning to flatten, but you can still kind of see their shape up in here and here, okay? Um, again, they're supposed to be spiny, but most of the time our photomicrographs don't really show it very well, okay? Spinosum is gonna go all the way up to about here, okay? Now, in this area right here, you will notice more staining, so darker purple stain, all right? And this is the stratum granulosum, so those keratin granules are causing it to stain a darker color. Now, we are looking at thick skin, so instead of four layers, there are five layers. So we're gonna introduce a new word. We're gonna introduce lucidum, stratum lucidum. This is also a layer of dead cells, and it's basically right here, this section. So the word lucidum is based off the idea of uh, lucid, which is based off the idea of clear. All right, I think of them as like a window. So what is happening? Why are they a lighter color than the corneum up here and the granulosum deep to it? Well, the plasma, remember the plasma membranes and the stratum granulosum are thickening up, all right? And there's more keratin. Because the plasma membranes are thickened up and tighter and they're freshly dead, all right? They're not weakened. They do not absorb the stain as well, so it appears a little bit lighter. Now, when you get up to here, this whole layer, which is the stratum corneum, is gonna begin to stain a darker purple again because Skin cells are proteins, or excuse me, the plasma membranes, not pro well, they are proteins. The plasma membranes, which are those glycolipids, as they get dried out and they've been dead for longer, they begin to weaken and crack, and that can absorb more stain. So then they take on a darker purple color, okay? So again, this slide was thick skin, and it had five layers, all right, to include the stratum lucidum. So we've got corneum, Lucidum, granulosum, spinosum, and basali. Okay, let's uh, look at the next slide. All right, on this picture, it's zoomed out a little bit more so that you've got a nice boundary right here between the dermis and the epidermis up here. Okay, now the stratum basali, which is gonna be our deepest layer, is just going to be a, um, what do I want? I want this. Let's see if this works. Is just going to be, can you see that? I don't think you can really see that. Let's try blue. Eh, a little bit better. This single layer of cells right up against the dermis right here, okay? So that's your stratum basale. Yes, there are melanocytes in there. They're pretty hard to distinguish from the keratinocytes, okay? The Spinosum and granulosum in this case are not showing up well as separate layers, and that is an artifact of this um, section, all right? It's just not that great of a section, a thin section, okay, when they made the cut. So basically your granulosum is gonna be right here, all right? And this part right here is all spinosum, okay? And in the spinosum, you can see the individual cells a little bit still, okay? Then in the corneum right here, this whole layer, you can see everything looks like these thin sheets. Some of them are kind of flaky, kind of like a pie crust. So that is your dead layer. Now, this was thin skin, which means there are four strata only. So we've got corneum up here. So that's number one. We have um, number two, granulosum, number three, spinosum, and number four, basali, basali. There is no lucidum. All right, I think I have one more um, drawing to show you. All right, photomicrographs are awesome, but sometimes they're difficult to interpret. So let's take a step back and look at a drawing. In this drawing right here, I have the boundary between the epidermis and the dermis. 
All right, and then this is a dermal papilla right there, which is labeled, okay? So let me get my highlighter, let's try blue. Oops, this single layer right here is going to be the stratum basali. Okay, and let's switch to green. All of this is going to be your stratum spinosum, okay? And then we're gonna switch to, I wish I had, I could, I can do purple, let's see, do I have purple? Let's see, I've got purple. We're gonna do purple right here for granulosum. So this is all granulosum right here, okay? And then let's switch to yellow to do our lucidum here. And then we're gonna move to just doing that for the corneum, okay? So what you should be noticing is very much cuboidal cells down here, still fairly cuboidal, but over here, as we get into the bulk of the spinosum, they're beginning to flatten and change their shape and take on a more squamous shape. This continues with the granulosum, and it is fully accomplished by the time you get to stratum lucidum and corneum. Now remember, every single cell I am touching right now, these are all keratinocytes. Now the nice thing about this particular picture is that they are also showing some other cells. So there's a teeny tiny Merkel cell, which is a little hard to see right there. Um, let me erase some of this and you can, oh, I don't have to, oh, I won't erase anymore. Well, oh well. So let me highlight, um, we've got, um, what do we have? Um, melanocyte right here. So there's a melanocyte that they're highlighting right there. Most of the time we're not gonna see those well. Right there was a Langerhans cell, which I kind of screwed up by not showing before I colored it over in green. Okay, now another thing to learn about thick skin is where do you find it? It is only in very specific places on humans, the fingertips and the palms of your hands and the palms and soles of your feet. Okay, so the, excuse me, the fingertips, the palms of your hands, the surface of your toes, so your toe tips and the soles of your feet. Those the only place where we have thick skin. Everywhere else is thin skin. So the words thin skin and thick skin do not talk about the thickness of the cutaneous membrane. The thickness of the cutaneous membrane is determined by the dermis. So the thickest skin on your body is on your back. Everybody's watched Silence of the Lambs and we all know that, okay? Um, but that is not where you have thick skin. So the thickest cutaneous membrane is your back, but that is thin skin because the epidermis is a thin epidermis. Thick skin is on the palms of your hand, and actually the skin, when you include the dermis and the epidermis, isn't very thick on the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet, okay? So do not think that this is referring to all of the skin. A better word would have been thick epidermis versus thin epidermis. Okay, that would have been better, but that's not what we call it, and so you're just going to have to deal with the confusion. Okay, all right, that was the end of part one. I'm going to stop here. You can take a break and then move on to part two.